Erica Zavaleta, and this is Ecosystems of California. Today we're going to talk about California's chaparral ecosystems. And if you were going to pick an ecosystem type that represented terrestrial California, you might likely pick chaparral. It's the most common vegetation type on land in the state. And because it occurs at a lot of different elevations all the way from south to north, it occurs in this huge variety of forms. Chaparral is most notorious for the intense wildfires that it carries and that sometimes also get carried by chaparral into suburban and urban areas. It burns really intensely. That's a defining feature of this ecosystem. It may burn as little as once a century, but when it does burn, everything above ground burns. So fire is a big part of what defines this system. And then the plants in it also define this system. Chaparral is an ecosystem of evergreen shrubs. They are typically on rocky, nutrient-poor soils. And they're in places which typify California that have hot, dry summers and relatively cool, moist winters. So in even drier parts of the state, you won't see chaparral. You'll get coastal sage scrub or desert communities. So in this part of the state, chaparral typically shares borders with grasslands and then with oak woodlands or with mixed evergreen woodlands like these that contain things like madrones, coast live oak, and other species like tan bark oak that we don't have right here. Some chaparral species like mountain mahogany you don't find very often, but here's is a patch of chaparral that has mountain mahogany in it at Jasper Ridge down near Searsville Lake. And you can see that it's got these really distinctive structures on its seeds to help disperse them. So chaparral comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes depending on climate, soils, and the dominant vegetation. Here at Jasper Ridge, a lot of the chaparral is dominated by chemise, a denostoma, which is this guy. Now if you look around in this stretch in particular, you can see that there are a few other things in here, but mostly, mostly in this patch, chemise. Here's a manzanita. Because chaparral occurs in so many different parts of the state, some of its important plant genera, like manzanita, contain many, many different species and subspecies. And many of those species and subspecies are endemic to really particular locations. So manzanita has about 56 species in the state of California. And then ceanothus, or California lilac, also has about 50 species in the state of California, and there are just a few others elsewhere in the world. Plant species in the chaparral have to deal with these really hot, sunny days. And so one of the things you'll notice is that there are a lot of leaf adaptations in this system to cope with those conditions. The manzanita's leaves are pretty vertical. Their faces aren't up to the sun. They're more perpendicular to it. And they're pretty thick and tough. They're all evergreen. That's a mark of all of the plants in this system that dominate. Then you can see that other plants have this kind of shiny cuticle. If you measure the thickness of these leaves in relation to their area, they all have a pretty thick leaf profile. And that's to prevent water loss as well as to deal with the high temperatures during the day. I'm standing on this patch of completely cleared ground next to the edge of the chaparral stand. And it's completely cleared by animals that live in the chaparral. So you might think about why it is that they would only go this certain distance from the shrubs. And there's some different competing explanations for why that might be, but one of them is that if they are using the shrubs as cover to stay safe from predators like hawks, they're really much, much more likely to clear vegetation and collect seeds just close to the shrubs and then to venture further out less and less often. The result is that you have this cleared area around the shrubs that looks almost as though there's something chemical preventing plants from growing in it.